Thank you, Nurla. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, I am in this in this group since the very beginning, which was 2014, when we launched uh, the second phase of the Color Task Force. And not many of uh, <laughs> I see very few faces here who were here only seven years ago. Kate, well, of course you were here. I was in this group also in the 90s during the first <coughs> Color Task Force led by <coughs> Claire Lise uh, Shenya, who is retired since many years. And I was a young clinical microbiologist, really. I was entering and I could, I was saying, well, I, I'm working also in cholera, but I could not say I'm a cholera expert. Can I say that now I am a cholera expert? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I know a, bit, a little bit more than others, but what do we have to know if we feel we are cholera experts? Don't we need training? Who is needing training uh, as a cholera expert? Cholera expert in what? For doing what? So we created this group, this wash capacity and training group, Quo Vadis. Where are we going with this training? We need training. I'm 60 years old and I'm still at every mission in a cholera epidemic. I learn something, really. I learn something from others from medical doctors, from PR people, from technicians, from engineers. We have this team with Michelle, Justine, Alexandra, Bram, Christophe, and myself, and some of uh, these people are, most of them are here in the room, I'm glad about that. And uh, Christophe, you will, you will take over the next presentation. And we met a few times before Christmas, trying to identify the training needs within the task force. Do we need specific training? Which knowledge skills should we train? Think about with me now. Try to think about what do we need because we need your help also to design and to think about how can we implement training, for whom, when, on what topics, skills. Should we do a general or more specific skills to be trained? We drafted a few lines. Um, uh, design the needs and gaps. <clears throat> so the step one would be to look at wash activities that need to be implemented before, during, and after a color outbreak. The step two is to identify competencies that are needed to implement those activities. And step three is to look with, with other members for existing trainings and if they would respond to the need for competencies. And the last step, identify gaps and share those gaps with the rest of the of the task force member, ask for partner support to develop those trainings. And who, who should we train? Definitely we should prioritize training for those who are living in the places where cholera is. I mean, not only in Bruxelles, but maybe in the Great Lakes region, people in the South. Not people from headquarters. I mean, we, we can let the philosophers work from themselves. The, at the headquarters, people work on cholera, but they could work on COVID or they could uh, work on general public health, or they could work on standards, but these are people from the headquarters. Of course they need trainings, but they need maybe different trainings. And then, what kind of training? Just um, a course, a workshop, then you get a piece of sheet, yes, you participated to this workshop, is, is that training? Or we would like to have certified training. When you do the course of two, three, four days, you have to pass an exam. So you are not allowed to sleep during the training. This is also important. Who is a cholera expert? Who is a cholera expert? Of course, a medical doctor maybe? Yes, medical doctor can be a cholera expert. Oh, yes, I'm a medical doctor. I should be more, sorry. <laughs> what, hang on. I'm a clinical microbiologist, not, uh, sorry. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. But you, of course a medical doctor does know who, what is cholera. He knows what Ringer lactate is. Do you know what ring, Ringer lactate is? ORS, oral rehabilitation solution. Can you apply a needle to a, to a patient? Can you? I can't. I did it. But usually I can't. But I know how it, it works. I, I, training doesn't mean that I have to do things, but I have to know how it works. Do you know what's, what's uh, the priority A, B, and C in a cholera treatment center? 
Do you know how do you divide the personnel between nurses? Do you know what to do when nurses are scared of cholera patients? I mean, this doesn't happen in Africa because cholera is very well known in the Great Lakes. But when I was in Haiti, nurses and doctors were scared of patients. They were scared of patients. They were scared to get cholera. And then me, as a clinical microbiologist, let me do it. And I take a patient and I bring it to the CTC and I show them that they don't get cholera. Of course, I don't touch my mouth with my hands. But there are many things that you have to know uh, about cholera that usually medical doctors know and not engineers, civil engineers. You should know uh, many things of, the, of this disease because we are talking about a disease, a diarrheal disease. Cholera is a diarrheal. Do you use anti antibiotics? No, never. Well, it's not true. Sometimes you use antibiotics. When do you use antibiotics? You should know that. How do you cure cholera? Basically, it's 20 liters of drinking water, clean drinking water, 20 liters. How long? Is it one day enough, 48 hours, 72 hours? I mean, this few information, you should have it even if you are a civil engineer. You don't have to be a medical doctor, but you should have it. Do you know these things? Some you know, some you don't know. What about if you are this type of color? Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. I mean, if you are this type of color expert and you go to, the, to your office in the ministry, well, of course, you can be an engineer, you can be a doctor, but sometimes you are a PR person, communication person, you don't know really much about Ringer Lactal. What's Ringer Lactal? Maybe you know that color is a diarrhea, that's it. But you know about strategies, political strategies for the government. You know many other things that are useful for, for, for cholera prevention, for cholera strategies, for eradication um, strategies at governmental level. Of course, but even in this position, you should know few things, few more things about cholera that doctors do. And maybe you should also know some few things that uh, WASH specialists know. I mean, this is also a wash um, color expert. What sun? <laughs> this is the way I feel more comfortable, I must say. Well, engineering emergency. How many of you have read this book? I mean, you cannot read this book, right? I never read it. I always had in my trolley, at every mission, not only cholera, but also war, disasters, uh, migrations, because, I mean, engineering emergency, you have always very good things in here. You have like four pages on how a CTC works. Did you read those pages? It's very old, but it's very, it, it's very good. We always reinvent things. Even in our yellow book, we reinvented things much better, for sure. But also what's written here 20 years ago, how a CTC works. It's quite, quite uh, interesting. Cholera, it's quite an easy disease. It's quite easy to cure from cholera. You don't have, you don't have to drink water. You cannot drink, you throw up. Okay, we inject you ring it like that. And if we, if we don't have ring it like that, we inject you some kind of liquid which is sterile, and we can do that. And uh, as uh, cholera experts, we should know few things that engineer knows. I mean, how many cholera experts know what this is? This is a turbidimeter. I, I know that, you know, we are in a wash. We are, everybody of us knows this and knows how to use it, right? I hope, because you have to know this. It takes me five minutes to explain to an engineer how this works maybe 10 minutes to an anthropologist. And uh, what about this? This for measuring free residuatorine. It's quite easy. Let's do it. You can 
calculate how much time, how much time it takes. Is there chlorine in this water, yes or no? Yes, there is chlorine. There is free residual chlorine, FRC. Do you know what FRC acronyms? Acronyms, oh God, acronyms. FRC, everybody knows? Of course, we are Sorry, watch people. Take the microphone again, otherwise we don't mind. Sorry about sure, yes. And then you have a comparator and you can calculate exactly how many PPMs. PPMs, what's PPMs? Grams, uh, milligrams per liter. Do you know about milligrams per liter? Of course we all know, because we are wash experts. But we should know this also if we were doctors or if we go to the minister to talk. Because it's quite easy. It takes 10 minutes to explain it to an engineer, 20 minutes to an anthropologist. And then if you don't, I mean, if you have water which is below 5 NTUs, 10, even 20 NTUs, you can chlorinate. Wow, great. How do you chlorinate? Well, you take this, HDH, oh God, acronyms again. HDH is the most used powered chlorinate water. You should know what this is, right? We know it. But also doctors should know that because it's easy. If I have to chlorinate a five cubic meters tank, five cubic, me cubic meters, five cubic meters track, one cubic meter, a thousand liters, five thousand liters. How much do I need? A box like this? A spoon like this? A spoon like this? Or a small grain? Do we all know this? I tell you the, the solution. It's a spoon like this. What happens if I put two spoons? People are going to die? No, they're not going to die. Instead of one ppm, I will have two ppm. It will smell of chlorine. They will never die. Because the, the level, the toxic level for chlorine, for use of chlorine is how much? 5,000 ppm. So if, if I put 100 spoons, they will not die. They just not, don't drink that water because it's smelling chlorine like, like crazy. If we don't have HDH, if we don't have this, then we can produce chlorine very easily. This is water. You know that, right? Because you are a wash expert. But also doctors should know that it's easy to produce chlorine with salt water. In two hours, you produce enough sufficient chlorine for 10 cubic meters. In one day, you can produce chlorine for 100 cubic meters very easily. You, you only need electricity and kitchen salt. It's very easy. So I don't want to go much further with this show, and sorry for doing this. But just to tell you that there are many uh, simple things that people should know when they call themselves um, color experts. I show you most of things that engineers know when they are in the field, because this is my, my main function when I go for color. But I'm also a professor at the university, I teach at the university, and, and I, I have uh, to do with many people who are doing governance, who are do doing public relations, people and, and medical doctors, people who are working in the, in the clinical sector. Originally, I'm a clinical microbiologist. And I realized when I was a young uh, clinical my microbiologist sitting there in the 90s with, with Claire Lee Shenya, I, I, I was thinking that it is important not to confuse Biblio cholera with a virus, it's not a virus, Biblia color, it's a bacteria, because there were people, they thought it's a virus, you know? And I was getting crazy about this. But this was not the clue. It's not just to know that Biblia color is a bacteria and not a virus. I had all these small things I had to learn. And many times in the field, people would not know these small things. They would not know how much chlorine do you need for chlorinating a five cubic meters tanks. And they, were, they had here wash experts. And then with the time, I, I started to pick up the people, oh, he knows how it works and I'm going to ask him. I'm not, to ask, I'm not going to ask that guy because it is written wash expert, but he's not a wash or color expert, but he's not a color expert. This is why we would like to, yes, to organize, uh, yeah. To, first of all, to compile the trainings we already have 
because among us, Chris, I will talk to you after, among us there are many people and, and, and others that already organize training uh, on, on color. There are different types of trainings, but uh, for us, for in our group, we decided that this training has to be uh, addressed to people who are really working with uh, color and not only talking about it. Thank you.